welcome to my channel I'm Scott and in this video we're going to talk about IRR internal rate of return we're going to first talk about the high level definition of IRR then we're going to look at a project calculate the NPV of that project then the IRR a second project we'll compare the two and do a summary at the end let's start with a high level understanding of IRR internal rate of return is identical to NPV net present value the main difference is you set the NPV equal to zero. If you're confused, don't worry, we'll go through a couple examples. And the purpose of NPV and IRR are for companies to evaluate whether to take on or reject a project. You'll commonly hear if NPV is greater than zero, you accept the project. If it's below zero, you reject it. So let's look at project number one. And we're gonna calculate the NPV of this one year project. We need to invest $100, and then after one year, we'll receive $130. The discount rate's gonna be 8%. So here's a little visual. At time zero, it's an outflow of $100. At time one, which is one year, it's an inflow of $130. The NPV, the net present value, is the value of this project in today's dollars. So you take the initial investment plus year one return, over one plus the discount rate. The initial investment is $100, so it's negative $100, plus $130, that's what we're gonna receive at the end of year one, over 1 1.08. We need to discount that dollar amount because we need to figure out how much $130 is worth in today's dollars. Since we're getting that money one year from now, we divide it by 1.08. If we were getting the money two years from now, we would divide it by 1.08 to the second power. So now our formula equals negative 100 plus $120.37. 130 over 1.08 is 120.37. So if we took on this project, it would add $20.37 to the value of the entire company. Since NPV is greater than zero, we should approve the project. If for example, we needed to invest $121 into this project to get 130 in one year, that means the NPV would be negative and we would reject the project. Now let's calculate the IRR. So the first thing we need to do is set NPV to zero. So you see it's the same formula as the NPV calculation, except the words in red, NPV and discount rate are gonna be different. So the formula is zero for NPV equals our initial investment plus year one over one plus IRR. On the previous page, we knew the discount rate and our unknown was NPV, so we had to solve for NPV. In this equation, we know the NPV. The unknown is the internal rate of return, so we have to solve for IRR. We plug in the numbers we know. Our investment is $100, so it's a negative. It's a cash outflow. We receive $130 at the end of year one over one plus IRR. Now we have to do a bit of algebra. And when we solve for the internal rate of return, we get 30%, which makes sense because it's a one year project and the project gave us a 30% return. We put $100 into the project and got 130. If you wanted to explain internal rate of return in one sentence to somebody, you would say it's the rate of return at which the net present value of a project is equal to zero. Some companies have more than one project to look at. Let's look at a second project we're offered. We're gonna calculate the NPV. It's also a one year project. The beginning investment is $50 and we receive $70 at the end of one year. Our discount rate is also 8%. Here's a visual, a $50 investment. At the end of one year, we receive $70. Once again, the formula for NPV, we plug in our inputs, negative 50 plus 70 over 1.08, which is negative 50 plus $64.81. This gives us an NPV of 1481. So we would approve the project because it's greater than zero, the NPV. Let's calculate the internal rate of return for the second project. We have to set NPV to zero. Here's the formula with the unknown of IRR. We plug in our known variables. Zero equals negative 50 plus 70 over one plus internal rate of return. If we do a little algebra, the IRR is 
In this second project, we invested $50 and received a 40% return. We received $70 after one year. You can think of the internal rate of return as the rate of growth you expect to receive annually. We can look at a 10 year project with a lot of cash inflows and outflows. We would still get an annual RRR. So it's pretty similar to Kager, compound annual growth rate. Some people prefer ROI, but that's not a good replacement because ROI does not annualize an investment. The reason the ROI can be deceiving is because it doesn't take into account time. If I ask you to invest $100 and I'll give you back $150, that's a 50% return. But I won't give you the $150 back for another 20 years. You may think that's not a good investment. But according to the ROI, it's still a 50% return. If I gave you $150 after one year, it's a great investment. A 50% return in one year is amazing. Let's summarize everything. Both projects have a discount rate of 8%. Coming up with an appropriate discount rate can be challenging for certain investments. You have to take into account opportunity cost, inflation, investment risk. The higher the discount rate, the higher the perceived risk of the investment. And the lower the discount rate, the lower the perceived risk of the investment. I use the same discount rate so we can compare the two projects. If the projects you're looking at have different discount rates, you have to take that into account when doing your analysis. Project 1 has a higher NPV, but a lower IRR. Which project should we take on if we could only take on one? Project 1 or Project 2? Whichever one you picked, you're probably right. Because you could justify either project. If we could only invest $100, then Project 1 would make the most sense, right? Because it would add $20 of value to the company. But if we had the opportunity to invest in Project 2 twice, meaning we can invest $50 in Project 2, then another $50 in Project 2, that would give us almost $30 in NPV, and that would definitely be a lot better than Project 1. But if we could only do each project once, then Project 1 would probably be better. Because if we did Project 2, even though we get a 40% return, the other $50 is just sitting in the bank account earning 1% interest. So when you combine Project 2 and $50 sitting in the bank, it's still less than $20 of NPV. But if you are able to invest more than $100, then you probably should take on both projects. But not every company has unlimited money to invest. So you only want to accept projects where the internal rate of return is greater than the discount rate which is the same as the NPV greater than zero. The internal rate of return is a great way for a company to evaluate different investments. So generally speaking, the higher the RRR, the better. But you also want to look at the risk of the investment, that's a discount rate, the NPV as well. So I hope this video gave you more information on what internal rate of return is. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe. Talk to you soon.